Yo guys, what's up, it's X-Rays, and welcome back to another video. So today I actually wanted to talk about some bits of news that we did get this past week with the current FTC versus Microsoft trial that they've had in terms about the acquisition of Activision. So as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, for a little bit now, a little bit over a year now, Microsoft has been trying to finalize the purchase of Activision Blizzard to kind of absorb them as one of their studios like they've done with Bethesda and other actually pretty well-known studios. Sony has done the same. They've purchased some studios. And so it kind of became this whole who can buy the, the most studios type thing to make exclusive content for their console. Uh, and so with Call of Duty, which is such a big game that's played by a lot of people on both consoles, PC, even mobile now. I think mobile might even be the biggest player base they have. But Sony basically was against the acquisition of Activision Blizzard mostly for that. They didn't want Microsoft to make Call of Duty exclusively for Xbox and PC uh, for their services, essentially. And so this whole lawsuit has been going on because they're trying to say that it's uh, against competitive practices. The FTC has been kind of involved with this as well or FFC, I don't even know what the hell they are, but they're the Federal Trade Commission. Okay, never mind, the FTC. Uh, and so they've been kind of the past week having multiple days of litigation where both sides are arguing why it's okay for them to buy Microsoft and the other one saying that it's not okay. And a lot of stuff has been revealed actually quite a bit. There was revealed that the reason that Microsoft got Bethesda or purchased Bethesda was because they were told that Sony was coming in to make a deal to try to make all of their games exclusive to Sony's PlayStation 5 and future consoles for them. Uh, they weren't going to buy the studio from what I understand. They were just planning on offering them money so that their games would be console exclusives to them. And so Microsoft heard about that and were like, nope, I don't think so. And they won and they just straight up purchased Bethesda, which is kind of insane. And with Call of Duty, they were kind of going back and forth over the deals that they had in place where they said they were going to do 10 year deals uh, and that we're going to promise them they were not going to be exclusive games. And then there was like talk of like, what if it's on day uh, on Game Pass day one and how that was in something sustainable for Call of Duty. It was just a lot of stuff. But some of the things that were brought up there that were very interesting, obviously one of them was they revealed the fact that Sony wanted to buy Bethesda, but uh, or not buy, but uh, buy the exclusive rights to their games, and that's why Microsoft purchased Bethesda. The other one was they accidentally revealed via court documents how much Horizon for uh, Horizon Forbidden West and also The Last of Us Part Two cost, which was around $200 million for each game, which is crazy, but also it makes sense when you have that many people working on a game and they're getting paid an average of like a hundred thousand dollars a year so obviously 200 million sounds about right um and then you also had other stuff that was talked about which was interesting one they did confirm that the next call of duty that is modern warfare 3 is going to be coming out this november we didn't have a previous launch window for that we kind of knew it was going to be october november one of those two months but now we know it's in november and then the other piece of news which was very interesting that a lot of people talked about was the switch 2 they mentioned the switch 2 the switch successor and specifically uh, the reason this was brought up was because Activision had made a deal, or I should say Microsoft, because apparently Activision was also unaware of some of these deals that Microsoft was making, uh, where they were gonna also make Call of Duty games for the Switch. Uh, and so, or for Nintendo consoles, I should say as well, not just specifically the Switch, but they promised a 10 year deal as well with Nintendo. But then they also revealed a lot of other details like, if Nintendo put the Call of Duty on the Switch, it wasn't really going to make them any money. It was going to go 100% of the money to Microsoft. And so there was also that whole controversy. There was a controversy when this was first announced that, well, how the hell is this game even going to run on a Switch? There's no way it's going to run on a Switch. They would need a specific studio to be able to do that. And even um, the people from Activision were like, yeah, they said that. And then we were like, well, how the hell are we going to do that? We don't we don't know if we can do that. So it was all very interesting just seeing them kind of going like, wait, what? You said this? And it was just funny uh, because that usually happens when people are trying to make deals just to get things started, just kind of get the ball rolling. And then from there, where they're talking about, well, they're, they're going to make a deal with, with Nintendo. And then they talked about how they missed an opportunity by not releasing 
Call of Duty games on Nintendo Switch because apparently when they first got the prototypes for the Nintendo Switch, they didn't think that it was going to do well. They like saw the prototype and were like, yeah, this is not going to do well. Uh, we're not going to invest in uh, making Call of Duty for the Nintendo Switch. And then they said that now they regret it because they saw just how popular and how big the base is for the Nintendo Switch. And that now they're considering with whatever the next console it is that they should make something for it. They should make a port for it. Now, when that was talked about, that obviously led to the question of, well, could it even run on a Nintendo console? To which they responded by saying that the next Switch successor is going to be about as strong as a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One. So that is pretty interesting. And then I was seeing some people talking about how it might be closer to like, PS4 Pro series uh, or Xbox One X levels of uh, power. And a lot of people were like, great, they're still gonna be like a generation behind. Now, this is what I think of that. I specifically wanted to, talk, to get to this point so I could talk about this. I think that if it's another Switch, a mobile console, and you're able to run PS4 games on that, I would be pretty happy with that. Like if they have a mobile console again, another Nintendo Switch you can take around that has PS4 level graphics, especially for like, that is kind of awesome mobile, like taking with you mobily, but that also means that you can still have some games that you can port over that it, it, it probably there's, listen, it, it has to be strong in the Steam Deck. It has to. But the thing that I'm most excited for, uh, for me, because I feel like a lot of people buy Nintendo consoles specifically for Nintendo games, they, you either have an Xbox or a PlayStation 5, and you also have a Nintendo Switch. Like, it's not like the Switch is competing with the PS5 and the Xbox series, uh, you know? It's it's not, it really isn't. If you want a game that's gonna look breathtakingly ble beautiful with like bleeding edge graphics, you're gonna go either with the PS5 or the Series X. It's just the way that it is. If you're looking to play other games that aren't as demanding, that are gonna have that Nintendo fresh take to it, you're gonna buy a Nintendo Switch. So, which is a smart move from Nintendo. They made their console a competitor companion to that other more powerful console that you want to have for those bleeding edge games so a lot of people bought the switch because again they're not looking to choose between a switch and a ps5 or an xbox they're just but choosing between the xbox and the playstation and then also a switch they're getting the switch either way and so if they have a console that has the same power level we're just going to call it that like this is dragon ball z the same power level as a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One, then that gets me super excited for exclusive Nintendo games. For the next Bayonetta game, for the next Legend of Zelda game, for the next Mario games. I am finally gonna be able to see, hopefully, and again, I don't I don't know because you don't really you can't really tell. Maybe you need the PS4 Pro. But if you could see 4K Nintendo games, that's gonna be freaking insane, dude. That's gonna be so awesome. I'm so excited for that. Just having games that look, because even on the Switch, it's like 1080p, but it's not really 1080p resolution. It's like, it like gets forced into 1080p upscaled on your TV when you have it docked, or when you're on just handheld mode, it's like at 720p, sometimes not even that. I am so excited to play and I really hope they make the Switch 2 backwards compatible with uh, Nintendo Switch games because now there was a rumor also that Nintendo is working on a way to transfer or have a better ecosystem of Xbox accounts, or I should say Nintendo accounts across their different generation of consoles so you can continue to take forward all of your progress that you had in games and then also the digital games that you have bought. So if you bought a game on the Nintendo Switch, hopefully you'll be able to download it and play it on the Nintendo Switch 2, if it's called that. I don't know if it'll be called that. But if this does happen, then that means that all of those games could hopefully also get a bump in resolution and you'll be able to play these games at fi higher frame rates and at better resolutions and then moving forward you could have a lot of these games like i want another tears of the kingdom game with the same characters and a different setting kind of like a majora's mask situation where they go to another kingdom zelda and link and then they are trying to help this kingdom or whatever and link gets new powers and you get to explore new areas and stuff to me that would be the ideal transition 
from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom to now the next game. You know, for so for me, that would be probably the coolest thing. And we would get that game in actual 1080p with insane graphics that aren't limited by a mobile processor like the Switch has. And to me, that's going to be like what I saw when I first saw the Wii U and they did that tech demo for uh, Legend of Zelda that looks super hyper realistic. To me, that is what I feel it would look like. That would be that feeling that I got when I first saw it. And I was like, holy crap, 1080p Nintendo, what is this? So <laughs> I really want them to do that. I'm just excited for Nintendo IPs that would run on that would require the power of a PlayStation 4 to me that's insane uh that's the thing that I'm most excited for because you look again you look back at what they did with Xenoblade Chronicles 3 with Breath of the Wild with Tears of the Kingdoms these absolutely huge games that ran amazing on the Switch despite the fact that this thing's like more than 10 year old tech is insane to me that they were able to run these games now imagine what they're able to do when they have more freedom with a ps4 type level of power it's just gonna blow my mind so i'm really really excited i want to talk about this because i feel like a lot of people are like oh it's gonna be just ps4 and, and xbox one graphics and it's like hey man a lot of these games like people like look at the recent controversy with spider-man which is going to be now a PS5 game, Spider-Man 2, people are saying that it looks the same as a PS4 game. I'm like, well, yeah, the leap isn't going to be that insane anymore. Uh, it's probably just going to run better and have better frame rates and have like slightly stuff better around the edges. So, I mean, a Nintendo console that has like PS4, maybe even PS4 Pro graphics, I would be totally happy with, especially the cream on top. If it is a handheld that you can go around and play with. I don't know what the battery life would be on that thing, but if it's true, I'm pumped and I really hope that it is true because I want to play Nintendo console games on the go that look breathtakingly beautiful when you talk it like just God, can you imagine a Zelda or a Mario game on that resolution? It's going to be chef's kiss, baby chef's kiss. Anyways, guys, so I just wanted to talk about this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and notifications on so we don't miss a single upload. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so by checking out my sponsors, Control Freak and Aim Controller. I use them every time I play. Code OGX for you get to a discount. Link in the description below to that or through my Amazon um, influencer page if you guys would much rather do it that way. And then if you guys want to talk and interact at OGX is over on Twitter, give me a follow over there. Link down below. You guys have an awesome day. Take care. I'm out. Peace. Oh,